Hello, all. Hi there. Hey, guys. How are you tonight? Good. Good. I know Steve said he's coming, uh, but he may have to leave early tonight. Um, but actually, I think it's going to be a relatively short meeting. Uh, we don't have a ton of agenda items tonight. Go ahead. Graham, what um, 
What, how much rain did we get? What does your rain gauge show uh, in that last year? My, my rain gauge showed a little bit more than an inch. Yeah, we, it was a pretty good, it came down, I, get, I think hard and fast late at night because I could tell by the way things were moving around or, yeah. how, the dry, yeah. or how the driveway looked. We could tell by our wet carpet on the, <laughs> on the south side of the house. Yeah. yeah that's in my pool well, pump. About an inch also. So, oh, boy, boy, am I thankful for that rain, though. Yeah, yeah. we needed it so desperately. Desperately, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. The trees, the trees are smiling in the windows now. Yeah. So. yeah. There's Steve. Hi. Hi Hello. there. Mm. All right. Well, as long as we're all here, I guess we can just get started and get back to lounging in pools and drinking beers and eating ice cream, whatever else we do on these days to stay cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So first thing is approving our meeting minutes from June 15th. Um, so moved. Thank you. Can I have a second? Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Um, all right, Graham, uh, hut report. How are those mice doing? Uh, yeah, well, I think I think the mice are now out in the cold or the hot or whatever. Um, I've seen no, uh, on multiple trips, I've seen no evidence that they're eating any of the uh, peanut butter, little, um, you know, telltales and... Uh, um, and uh, there's been no more mouse poop. And even that stray mouse um, poop that you and I saw, I suspect the fans moved <laughs> moved mm. it around a little, um, and that that it may have been a, an I, I'm not going to make a comment there. <laughs> All right, okay. okay, thank you, Steve. You're, 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 you're always such a polite fellow. Um, but anyway, and the, no, the, nothing was hitting the fans? We're okay? <laughs> you're, we're you're, okay. You're okay, you're right, yeah, of course. <laughs> what, had, what had hit the fan? Um, yeah. but, I did, uh, but I did look in every, uh, because of, uh, of the possibility of sealing mice into the hut and, and therefore really creating a problem. I looked in every um, in every spot that uh, that they could move into and I know that they can't live in a switch at least um, you know so um, so um, yeah it, it's pretty evident that there's no more mice in there and uh, uh, and then the other thing is uh, now summer uh, in summer mode I, um, I run both the HVAC units because um, uh, because if you don't have any guarantee of uh, lower than 90 degree air outside, then your backup of an exhaust fan system is no good. So, so for July and August and, and usually September, um, the uh, two HVACs will run at the same time, one in lead and one in lag, um, so that um, yeah, uh, so that the backup one will come in if uh, if the first one fails. So, uh, is that, Graham, is that actually a setting lead and lag, or is it just the way you set no, the it's, levels? It's just set it yourself. Yeah. So yeah. So you know the, the hut's set on seventy five, and um, and the the lagging one will start cooling if it gets to eighty three or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, so there's the lag, and I'll I'll flip them over just so that. We don't have one of them working hard all through the summer, and uh, okay, no, and um, yeah, and so nothing else uh, there to. Uh, 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 so I'll just I just say uh, what the uh, the Tim Otto report for the month was, Gail. While I proceed, to sure, that. sure, why not? No. So eight eight of the tickets for the month uh, were just administrative details, people um, coming and going and turning things on and off, um, and one of the administrative ones said. Com compromised account, which I assume wasn't first up. I saw a compromised account, and I thought, oh, you know, um, uh, you know, hacked. But but I I I'm sure it means um, uh, their yeah you know, their uh, credit card or something like that. So probably um, someone's account didn't pay that month, and they had to do something else. So ten customers had questions um, in those tickets. Um, there were only two internet problems. Um, uh, and um, one of them being uh, internet out, uh, and and, um, and uh, then there were twelve voice over IP um, tickets, um, and six of those were the call dropping out issue, 
when they had the call routing um, uh, problem with their system. Um, and, um, and in fact, they would have had more than six call dropping complaints because they didn't have mine logged. <laughs> and uh, uh, so it was a systemic thing. I guess they just figured that six was a sample. So uh, uh, yeah, so and just uh, the other detail in Tim's report is uh, halfway through the year, we have about 10 drop repairs um, in the six months, which is very comparable and a little better. Uh, 10 drops repaired or, or relocated for contractor stuff. Um, and that's comparable and um, to 2021 and 2020 at this time of the year. And it's actually a little better. Um, in the first year, there were, you know, probably there were 15. Um, uh, and in 2021, 18 by this time, and there's 10 right now. So, so you know, it's pretty... Uh, it's not a dramatic year from the point of drops being moved or knocked down. So that's all. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Um, thank you, Graham, for sending me uh, the summary of the HVAC maintenance schedule. Yeah. Um, I'll get that into our kind of broadband um, overall manual. I'm revising it since we're about to take on a new vendor and there's some things that have changed um, since um, I last wrote it. So that'll be a nice addition. Um, also wanted to let you know that Brad Foster was taken care of this week. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, he was, he was one of those ones that had a cable that had to be moved for, uh, for uh, reasons of aesthetics, I guess. Yep. We also got that big project done at 85 Leonard road, the underground conduit, um, with the help of the, uh, highway department and the police department. So it was a big, big coordinated effort. And it only took two months to arrange. So not bad. <laughs> right. So they had a temporary service across the road at that, uh, for that period, did they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we just um, had, had kind of, kind of draped it, draped it across uh, to get them service. Um, but uh, anyway, not, it's, it's not ideal. I, you know, I, I would have preferred not to have put conduit under the road, but there really was no other way to do it without spending tens of thousands of dollars to build a massive trench from the neighbor's house to their house. And so, um, anyway, Which is it's also not ideal, not ideal. Either. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, you know, it, it, it solved. And, um, I was glad that Tim hunting wanted to be involved in it so that the highway department, you know, it's to their specs. They, you know, they know where it is and, and all of that. Did they put it two feet under the road surface or? Do you, do I don't, you know? I don't know what they did, but whatever they did, yeah. Tim says they're not going to, you know, bust into it again. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask, we'll, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll ask Steve um, who lives up the road. Yeah. 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 Good. Um, yeah. So that's, that's taken care of. Um. All right, so moving into the financial report, um, as you know, I took over from Steve starting July 1st, so Steve's been amazingly helpful with all of my questions. I think my record of calling him is three times in one day, so he's been very patient. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm still getting my bearings. Um, I uh, just invoiced Crocker for another about 40,000 um, uh, um, for the month of June. And so we'll see a similar amount, say around 40,000 in MLPs coming for July to and August, um, because you know we have a couple of extra months we didn't anticipate here because the, the switch has been delayed. Um, and after that, we'll see a slightly reduced um, income from the MLP fees because it, it's it's you know we're we're drawing back on that. Um, and um, I don't have any of the fiscal year 22 closeout documents, nor the fiscal 23 startup documents yet from Gail. Um, Jim, do you know if those went out and I wasn't included or, or do we just not have them yet? I wanted to check with you because I, I don't know if, if I've missed something because I'm not on the right list or is she still closing out the accounts for the previous fiscal year? Yeah, I think they're, they always run a little bit behind schedule. Um, there is some, we got some closeout stuff, but it was sort of indeterminate. I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised you haven't received anything. It usually takes a while for that, uh, for that to take place, at least a month or so. And, okay. 
I assume I'm still on that mailing list and I haven't seen it come through. So if I see something come through, Gail, I'll try and remember to uh, contact you and see if you got it all. So thank you. Yeah, I've asked to be put on the list, but you know, who knows? There's a lot going on. Um, yeah, and so what I'm expecting from that report is that we'll have about um, uh, 190,000 in our excess funds for the year. Um, 190? Yes. That doesn't sound right. That's, does that sound completely wrong? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going by um, what I saw from the last May report and then adding like another 30 grand to it. Am I looking at completely the wrong thing? It's very possible. Yeah, it's, I'm thinking it's around 100,000. 109 kind of rings a bell. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I see I see a total fund balance um, on that May report at 163,000. Hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, oh, I, I know, I know it's wrong that it, it, it includes the stabilization mm. that, that, that would okay. explain it. Yeah. Um, and I think some other things too, that normally don't end up anyway. Um, when that final financial report comes out, um, I can, I can let you know where we stand for the end of last year in the beginning of this one. Um, so, so Steve, you think it's more like 109? I, it was around 100,000, but I, I, don't, I don't remember precisely. And when, when Gail just mentioned 190, I was thinking well, 109 would sound more like it, but oh. I don't think you need to record that at this point, Jim, it's, it's all so this is pretty speculative, so. Yeah, maybe just say something like, you know, we'll yeah. have a full report at the end of the fiscal year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, in other news, um, transition uh, plans are, are, going, are going pretty well. Um, there's, you know, we front loaded a lot of that work anticipating that the switch was gonna happen at the end of July. And so now we're kind of in this waiting period um, right now. Um, and um, so, at, you know, everything's going, going along for um, a targeted date of August 30th. Um, let's see. Um, I am glad that we are switching vendors. I don't know what's been going on with Crocker, but there's been um, more complaints than normal about kind of lack of service. And, and what I mean by that is, is not timely callbacks from technicians for folks. Um, I, it, I have a feeling it has to do with, um, you know, some of their staff being on summer break and also, um, I think that they are doing a lot of work on that Block Island ro rollout. Um, and also, we may not be so much of a priority anymore yeah. because we're on our way out. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's all kind of speculation, but it's, it's, it's nice for me when people complain to be like, you know, uh, to let them know, like, yeah, we're, we're moving away from, from Crocker right now. I was going to say that last week I had a call in to Crocker because for some reason our phone went to call blocking as the default, uh, ID blocking. Mm. And I called up, we got an operator. She immediately got me a service person. He looked and he said, it looks like it's not blocked. Then he said, I'll talk to my colleague and I'll get back to you. Um, 10 minutes later, I get an email from the second guy saying, I fixed it while you were talking to the first guy. It's done. Don't worry about it. Oh, so, geez. Um, well, that's great. <laughs> well, and, well, they didn't do they, they didn't do as well as the one that Gail and I were involved in the other day, right? Because oh. uh, someone uh, their their ONT went off. Uh, they lost the internet, and um, they have no cell phone service. So they uh, uh, and um, and they um, and they called. So they went somewhere where they could call Crocker, and they must have got a. a uh, recorded voice on now uh, because they didn't get to talk to anyone and therefore they were uncertain that their 
ticket was going to, you know, get any response from anyone. So then they phoned Gail, they phoned me, they phoned, who else did they phone? Gail? Did they phone anybody else? Anybody yeah, they, else oh, get yeah. a message? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm surprised they didn't phone all the rest of you as well. No. Um, so, you know, um, it doesn't often happen that the Crocker answering service doesn't answer, but it does sometimes because I've got their recorded message myself uh, at least once. So. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't, there's nothing to do about it now, but once Shell takes service, I do want to have a conversation with them about how do we help these customers when their phone and internet goes out? Because there's like, <laughs> there's, you know, you're like out of luck. You're, yeah. you're, you're out of luck. And, you know, yeah, you can drive somewhere, you get the cell service, but then, you know, the like, how do they communicate with you? So uh, what I'm hoping is that Shell has some capacity to communicate with customers over text, mm. right? That's actually something that's, that's a hole in Crocker services. Um, if, you know, I, I, I don't think it's a great way to communicate with 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 customers um you know i think a, a live voice is better but if, if that's all you have and you can just get a text message out um it's better than nothing yeah. um you know it's a, it's a way to do that asynchronous communication um yeah. if, if that's necessary so anyway i've, I've bookmarked that and and we'll talk to sheld about it um we, we could also mention to people who do raise it as a question to us individually that you could buddy up with a next door neighbor, you know, yeah. um, uh, and, you know, yeah, and buddy up so that if they lose or you lose, then there's some way of communicating, but it's not a problem enough for me to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that Shell does well. I mean, I, I would say that customer service, generally speaking around the country, Verizon Wireless, et cetera, is horrible compared it's to- It's so bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Parker yeah. is, is, is in another era in terms of customer service yeah well leave even these people who got the answering services gail and i know they were back online uh, the drop had been repaired by 4 30 or four o'clock so yeah. in the afternoon and they called it in at 11 a.m so you know they did they did pretty good on that drop repair well i hope Shell does as well i can say that hiring people right now is is tough hiring good yeah. people is tough yeah yeah Let's see. In, in other news, um, you know that because uh, we sent out another notification about the switch, I have been getting questions from townspeople. You know, everything very general of like, when is this happening? And I say, well, I think. Didn't you read what I sent you at all? <laughs> uh, but but then you know some more complicated things such as you know if I have a Crocker email, what happens to that and. Um, uh, you know, what uh, questions about, about billing, can I still get my paper bills? Um, so I've, um, you know, I, our, our website covers almost all this, but, you know, people don't have time to read. So um, the word, the word's out there, um, you know, people seem pretty neutral about the switch still, uh, don't, don't, don't seem to care either way. They're uh, just glad that their rates are going down and um, that they don't have to do anything for it. Um, let's see. So about a month ago, Craig sent me an idea uh, that I want to run by you to include some service stickers in our first bill. Um, the idea came from Wired West, which is sending out kind of like magnets with the Whip City information on it with their support number. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, if you remember during the construction uh, period, we did print out little Shootsbury Net stickers that had our support number on it. And those were supposed to go on every ONT. I'm going to say they made it onto about a half of them. If I that, never got, I never got one. If what? that, yeah. Um, so um, I contacted Sunrays Printing and and did a design it's it's i mean it's nothing fancy it's just our logo with you know technical support and then our phone number which is transportable so whatever vendor we use it's always going to be our number great um good and so thinking we could send these out with the in tucked into the first bill that goes out to all mm -hmm. customers even if you opt to get <sighs> um uh emailed bills we're still going to email the first welcome letter and the first bill out to everybody. You know, e you know, even so after that, if you opt 
opted out of paper billing, you won't get that, but just going out to everyone, make sure it gets to all customers. So yeah, my idea is tuck this little sticker in there. Um, the catch here is that I designed a three by two sticker and which fits on the ONTs. The company that does the mailings for Shelled, it has to be five by three and a half. It's so, so it's too small. It's too small. Um, so I can redesign it and do the five by three and a half. The catch there is that it's, it doesn't fit nicely on the ONT. They're going to have to like slap it on the router or, or, you know, put it on their fridge. Um, and the cost is about, it, it's going to be around 500 for a thousand of these. Um, so that's, that's my thought. Um, on the fridge might be better, given yeah. that some people don't know what their ONT is right. or where yeah. it is. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Both yeah. Or, or they can put it on the router. I mean, yeah. No, no. Yeah. I was thinking on the welcome letter, you know, and, and we kind of like put a postscript on there and say, like, you know, included as a support sticker. You know, we suggest you, you, you know, stick this on your router or your fridge or anywhere else where you'll know where it is in case you have a problem. So every, everyone feel good about that? Spending yeah. that money to include that? Yeah, okay. but I'm just thinking, did you, if we're talking about the refrigerator, look into a mat. Uh, magnets cost a lot more. People can pin them up with a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I looked into magnet. It's um, uh, double the cost. Um, <laughs> and also then it does not give the option for them to put it near their equipment. And I, I okay. kind of think that's the better place for it than um, on, you know, on the fridge. Um, and then well, also the postage costs go up too, whereas the sticker mailings are free. Okay. Yeah, so the, mail, the only argument for the fridge is that there's a lot of people who are gonna have a problem with their phone and they don't realize that the router is their phone. Yeah. So they're not going to look at the router, but <laughs> there is that. Yeah, they, they, they stick it on the fridge. That's probably you. That, that'll yeah. work a lot. It gives them the option, at least, yeah. you know, just to stick it in either place. Yeah. Okay, great. I will, um, I will take care of that. Um, another thing I'm thinking about is that cell tower that's going up on Wendell Road and <laughs> um, it's up, I, it's up, it's going. It's up. Yep. And I know that it's, well, as far as I know, it's not active yet with any commercial characters or carriers rather. And that I don't think there's any plans for it yet, um, but there may be. So I've asked Holyo Gas and Electric for some of the commercial rates for dark fiber. Um, Jim, according to Jim Crowley, uh, for wireless carriers like AT&T or Verizon, what they would do is they would overlash their fiber to their existing lines to get fiber to that cell tower. But if it's another carrier like T-Mobile that they would uh, likely lease the dark fiber um, or possibly be interested in like a layer two transport purchase from us. So um, Holyoke said that they can totally help, help us navigate this. Uh, but we should start looking into our commercial renter rental policies now before it becomes a thing. Yeah. So that's kind and, of in the works. And and let's let's make it totally unfavorable for them to overlash because that's not something we want them to do. Um, uh, it's it's yeah it's inconvenient and an operational cost to us. So we well just, we oh, well no. we can't control them overlashing over their own stuff. Oh no no overlashing on ours. Sorry. Oh god no 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 no. I'm I'm saying yeah yeah AT and T yeah. or Verizon would overlash on Verizon's. Yeah okay yeah yeah no. not not well, ours. Yeah. Well Verizon can overlash on Verizon's lines. AT and T they don't have any connection to yeah. Verizon no. so. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, the other carriers wouldn't be able to. Yeah, yeah and this is an yeah. this is an AT and T tower, incidentally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I talked to the fellow that's handling emergency management now. Walter is retired, and he said that that is going to be a fully functional AT and T uh, 
the tower site, as well as offering this emergency service to the town. Oh. And um, oh, interesting. Okay, so so yeah. so so um, uh, civilians can use will be fully functional everything. It uh, yeah they said oh it, good. He said it'd be it'd be a regular AT and T uh, tower offering regular AT and T service, and oh. that then the um, emergency responders have an app that they put on their phone. Oh, interesting. Also functions off of that tower. Hmm. In addition, uh, the town gets to put their own, they're, they're allowing the town to put their own antennas on the tower at no charge for the town's own emergency radio system. But the way the cell um, aspect of it works, this is what I was told, is that it's a regular AT&T site, but that they can send out the signal directly to the app on the various responders phones and so fascinating and it, who do you hear this from steve yeah steve this is this is not uh, what i've or is it the fellow who took walter tibbett's place as emergency uh, okay. emergency management director and i don't have his name right now yeah whatever his name is okay yeah huh, well, fascinating walter said though to me because i quizzed him about this a while ago and he said that the town of Shrewsbury wasn't really interested in, in signing up for whatever it is that at and is going to provide, at least not at this point. And, and so hmm. that meant that they were going to go out and buy the special the special iPhones or whatever it is that that will have the software built into it to be able to respond um, uh, to this emergency uh, service. Now, the, 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 the addition of normal at and service, that is a new one. I have I have not. Hmm. And, and I think if, if, if that's the case, we better really sock it to at and you know, financially, because th th that's going to really start to horn in on, uh, you know, on our activities, so to speak. I mean, they are really pay for it. So I, I'm just a, a little bit of a chauvinist here, but um, I, 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 I would be more worried about that. That is news to me. That's not what I've heard in the past, mm. that, it, that this was just really, uh, unless, Unless the, uh, the whoever owns that tower um, is renting out space on that tower now to all comers, which I'm sure they'd like to do because they make a lot of money off of that facility now that they have the facility up. And there are antennas on that tower. I've seen them. Uh, at least mm. I think I've seen them. So uh, I'm really not sure what's going on. Um, but but your information is new information, and it worries me a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we, we had talked about this, about, about a cell tower kind of taking our business, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I think I'm, I'm actually less concerned about that now in that our prices are coming down so much yeah. that, that, and what, what we offer is going to be so much better than yeah. what, you know, that any, anybody could get for, you know, the bargain price of 60 mm -hmm. bucks a month. Um, you know, we, we might lose a handful of customers around Lake Wyola. That's one place I could see where, where people would feel justified, you know, not paying year round prices for internet if they have a different, if they have a different option. Um, but um, yeah, I, and we're going to be okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. We have, we have plenty of customers who love the service and the speed is wonderful. Added, added, added to that is the fact that the cell tower itself is not very high. They've kept it. Uh, it's barely a hundred feet, and that means that uh, the, the their ability to deliver service far and wide is going to be rather limited. Now, if that tower was two to three hundred feet high with lights on it and all the rest of it, that'd be a whole different story. But it's not. It's it's a rather low tower, and I even think some of the people on the lowest part of the lake or it might have even trouble getting you know connecting to it. But that's hard to say at this point. I'll have to go up and look at it. My biggest concern has always been if it's an ATT or a Verizon, that they'll go to their ATT cell customer cell phone customers and say, well, we're gonna bundle this and you <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That could be an issue for us, particularly because the bundles are off, often um, you know, one year initial cheap price and then it goes up later. And so they they may yeah. get switch. Um because of bundling packages, right? So nothing we can do about it, except, you know, keep our service good, keep our rates low. And as mm -hmm. 
Jim says try to get as much revenue. For... I'm not convinced that AT and T will want. My understanding with these towers is that they like to talk to each other, and then they don't have to do any backhaul. Yeah, it Whether could be like not... microwave links for little country towers mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Whether or not that tower can talk to another AT and T tower is another question. But I think they per they don't like to be on other people's hardware. Yeah, it could be. You learned it that seems problem. it seems like we would have been contacted by now. If, yeah, you would think. If they think, wanted yeah. to if, use if our they service. Knew, if they knew we were here. <laughs> yeah. But therefore, they may they probably made some other arrangements, whatever they may be. Well, if they're going to if they're going to offer a normal AT and T wireless service, I would think they would they would have to have a, a fiber connection at that point, wouldn't they? No, um, no the little towers have microwave links in various directions. Yeah. So they have, you know, they tie them in. Um, and or you can, you can go a long way with microwaves. Could yeah, they I, buy I, this service from Verizon? Well, Verizon would have to upgrade their 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 wires. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't deliver it over the crappy copper wires that no, are there but, now. But um I, I, have I guess they don't have fiber out that way. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I've also, and by brief glance, I have to go look at that tower again and what's on it, but I just didn't see, you know, like Graham, I didn't see any microwave on that tower at all. I just saw regular cell phone stuff, but I, I, I must admit, I, I should take another much closer look, maybe walk up, you know, walk in that road and and take a look at what's going on there. See if there, see if there's a fiber termination box on the last pole on the road. That would be that would be the giveaway. Yeah, if there is one, if they put one out, if uh, they put one there for yeah, tying okay. in from somebody. Right. That, that'll be worth checking out. We should do that. Yeah. All right. Um. What else? Um. No word about our our uh, ARPA proposal that we put in. Um, I assume the select board is sorting through a lot of uh, uh, proposals from different departments there. Um, and that is it on my list. Does anybody have anything else? Uh, I, I did tune in on the, uh, on the select board last night because they were talking about that um, Huh? how to split out the money and in, in the ECAC committee that I'm on. Oh, and, right, right. Yeah. That are, uh, an iron and the fire. Um, and they haven't, um, they're, they're, they haven't made any uh, concrete decisions uh, yet, uh, but they're, they said there were plenty of um, people asking for it. And, uh, and of course, more than half of it's committed to the school roof, which might pop back out if, if they get a roof grant from the state government, which yeah. we've never got before. So, and so yeah, it's they won't get this. I don't think they're going to get it this time either. Yeah. It's uh, it, it, it's way up in the air. The uh, M, whatever the organization is that allocates the money, has normally they would have supplied in um, you know some word about this in June. That's when they were scheduled to do so. But apparently, it's um, it's sort of wandering around, and no one really knows what's going on. And it might be October or November before any real statement is made if if indeed they have the money which they may not have at all so mm -hmm. i i wouldn't uh, it's hard to know what what's going on it's very murky let's put it that way yeah yeah so yeah it's kicked they've kicked the ball down the road a little bit yes that's exactly it and talking about schedule gail did uh, becky tell you uh, what the um, the culvert down at the dam is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did did was there? Did she respond to you when you asked what the schedule was? She she did, and the and the answer is unknown. Oh, okay, unknown. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She she said something about maybe September. She she was very very vague and uh, right. just sort of threw up her hands and, you know, they're crazy not to get 
that's underway right now is perfect because the water flow down Locks Pond, you know, down Sawmill River is 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 at is at the lowest point that it's been in maybe a couple of years. Uh, and don't worry. I, uh, don't worry now wait until the first hurricane's gone through and filled it all up. Yeah, I know, I know. And and, and September is an ideal month for hurricanes. Uh, yeah. So, but 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 she was saying, well, maybe it's going to have to be next year, and which worries me because it's going to be probably wind up being a lot more expensive for the town to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I'm a little bit upset about that, being on the so finance committee. So isn't there a contract yet? There was a, there is a contract, but that was for last year. Now, whether the contractor is gonna say, well, <laughs> you know, times have changed, inflation, recession, depression, everything mm -hmm. else, and now we want more money to complete this job. Even though, they're kind, con of, even though they're kind of on the hook because they have the forms, uh, the forms for the culvert itself, the physical forms, that are gonna be dropped into the ground have already been made. And so they're kind of on the hook at this point. They really, what are they gonna do with them if, if they don't apply them to a Locks Pond Road uh, culvert situation? So um, it's, it's, I wish I had a clearer insight into it. I keep pressing her on uh, about it on, on, on FinCom, but I'm not getting very good answers. I mean, because the contract will have a, a time frame that it's, it's Price that's right. That's right. Until a certain point. That's right. We can be claiming well, penalties now because they're late. I'm just well, kidding about that. The, the, well, no, but they, yeah. if we weren't ready, um, I know. Yeah, the penalties go the other way. We're no longer bound by that, mm -hmm. if the, depending on the wording of the contract. Yeah, the, the contractor could probably claim change orders uh, mm -hmm. uh, against yeah. against having to store things and wait longer and remobilize mm -hmm. twice. So there, there would be change orders. Yeah. Um, well, on, on they the agreed. They agreed to uh, to keep everything at the status quo uh, until this summer. Uh, so that what worries me is if we go past this summer, yeah. you know, that everything could uh, get a lot more expensive mm -hmm. for the town. But as you all know, the town just loves spending money on things. So <laughs> we don't don't, uh, which is going to be nicely reflected in our tax rate, as you all can imagine. Well, we can talk about having some extra money. I had a note. <laughs> I had a note that we had, uh, you know, that we were supposed to revisit our fifteen hundred dollar gift fund that just oh, sitting yes. there. Oh, oh yes, I was it noticing that sitting yeah. there. Yeah, uh, has has been for several years. Um, you know, we can just keep kicking this town down the can down the road and when a uh, need arises, um, we could put this towards it, but does anyone have any ideas, wants, needs for this at this juncture? How about um, the stickers, the stickers? That 500 bucks, off, that would bring it down to a sure. thousand. We, yeah, we've, we've got a supply line in the budget for $500. I put that in last year to cover buying myself a, a toner cartridge and paper and such that I was getting tired of using it and I, I never, I never actually used it. So, you know, it's, that's sitting. Too late to buy Bitcoin, right? With it. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, maybe it's the good. time to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, it might now. be, yeah. yeah it might be the moment. Yeah. Um, hmm. yeah, I still think, you know, that should be, that, that 1500, it should be for something special. You know, it was going to be for a party and. Yeah, it was party yet so. all right kick it down the road we'll kick it we, we'll kick it we I'll, have, I'll, we have a good idea <laughs> put another i don't know six months on it sounds fine yeah. okay okay uh all right anything else dinner <laughs> yeah let's all go have some dinner <laughs> all right everyone thanks so much we'll talk to you next month all right. okay thank Stay you cool bye bye, bye, -bye everyone bye, -bye.